Okay, the uh, people in front who organized this have, because we know that uh, despite the 20 or so meetings and consultations that we were not able to capture all of the sentiments and the opinions of everyone. So we will allow and open the floor now to, uh, to people who wish to raise points or make recommendations to, the, to an agenda for higher education. Are there any? Can we dim the lights? I cannot see the, the floor. Dim the front lights. None? Really? I'm sorry, I cannot, I cannot see because of the light. Good afternoon. I was hoping to see, uh, by the way, I'm Father Delphine from Amalay Balay Bukidnon. I was hoping to see that at the beginning of the declaration, it should be emphasized that the Philippine educational system is not a competition between the private and the public sector because that's what we are experiencing now. Yes. It seems that we are competing from each other. It should be emphasized, I think, that we are complementary for the purpose of forming the youth and the young to become good citizens of the Republic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone want to respond to that? Yes, though. <laughs> I think, I think Thank you. even if it's not specifically articulated, I think that principle is embedded across all, all the elements of the declaration by stressing a unif by, by ch challenging ourselves to come together for a unified vision and implementation of higher education reform. Uh, but we might want to articulate that uh, further. Okay. Thank you. Uh, attorney? I think there is no necessity anymore to include that expressly in the declaration because our constitution already provides for the complementary between public and private education. And all provisions of law, as well as the constitution, whenever we execute contracts, is deemed written already there. Thank you. Actually, what we could do is have one big picture that should really emphasize it. Uh, later on if you have one gigantic picture together. Other suggestions or comments? Yes, uh, sir. We remember your comment from this morning, so please be careful. Yeah, I know. But, uh, you know, in higher education, don't put so much restrictions. <laughs> Kasi, sari-sarili din natin yung kakatayin natin balang araw. And, and the way I look at it with that... Uh, uh, yung mga binasa ninyo is all applied, no? Tama yung sinabi yung doon na lalaki kanina, na uh, it's all applied. Mga lalaki lang ang mabubuhay sa uh, sinasabi ninyo. Mga maliliit na eskwelahan, lahat yan papatayin ninyo. Yun ang mangyayari sa amin. I say, I, I belong to the small schools, no? Pero, kayo lang, ang malalaki lang na eskwelahan ang makikinabang doon sa agenda natin ngayon. Thank you so much. You want to comment? Noted daw. <laughs> Sabi nila. <laughs> uh, let me get uh, Dana first and then the gentleman. Uh, let, let's get the lady. Could I get a reaction? Ay, dali, dali lang. Saan Okay. You don't have only to note, but you have to do it. Thank you. Noted and do it. <laughs> well, let me ask Dana first to... Si, si, si Dana muna, okay? And then the gentleman. Okay. R raise your hands so I know who you are. Uh, okay. Good afternoon. Um, I just want um, us to be reminded that in the private sector, not all schools are big schools. 
there are mission schools, there are small schools also in the private sector. And we are um, pledging to be unified and join um, hands so that we can have this, uh, these goals implemented. And in fact, the goals are very objective that we can do together. Thank you. I'll also ask Chicho, I'm sorry, I missed uh, Dr. Chicho to comment. I, I think I was going to say, I consider myself a small school. And I think like many of you, there are really challenges. Uh, and it's not because uh, small schools are being marginalized, but changes are just natural. And we have to try to anticipate and provide an education that's relevant. And some of us are able to do that successfully, and some not so successfully. And I think this is just a fact of life we all have to learn to live with. And it is not, this uh, declaration is really not uh, an agenda of any particular one group, but of all of us to, in effect, make the system work best first for students. Um, and if it's for students, then it would be working for all of us because uh, it would be good for our country. Thank you. There was a gentleman first and then the uh, lady in orange, or some peach, I'm sorry. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm representing a private uh, college in Laguna, being the president. I joined the manifestation of the gentleman that in reality there is really competition by the public colleges. We are experiencing that in our area. So to make things uh, fair to the private schools, I think we have to definitely state in this declaration that it should be complementation and to prevent competition and to avoid competition between public HEIs and the private, and the, uh, it, that could uh, prejudice or cause injury to the existence of private HEI. That's the reality. We have to, we have to admit that. In fact, the private schools here are suffering of decreased enrollment because of the competition made by public or government HEIs. I think that should be addressed carefully by your group before passing this. And there are, there are a lot of revisions to be made on this declaration, especially on the area of, in fact, we don't know about this voucher system and tertiary education transition fund. This must be clarified also. Because uh, we have to be clarified on what is the scope of this fund. Where does, what does it mean? Where, what is the basis of this fund? I think we have to make revisions of this declaration so that we will not be confused later on. I hope you get my point, sir. Yes, yes, of course. Thank you, sir. Uh, the Leon sister, the lady in peach was ahead of you. And then there were a couple of people who raised... Sister, there were a couple of people who raised their hands ahead of you, so maybe there was another gentleman who can go to the other mic before. Yes, ma'am. In this declaration, we are talking about uh, we should agree upon the purpose of higher education and the definitions of quality. I think this is so important. This is the most important before we make any step towards, uh, towards what is quality education. Because up to now, when we, when we uh, listen to the talks this, this morning, there should be more innovations in, uh, in, tr in approaches to education. And I think that that should be in the declaration because we have to have an education that is contextual, that makes people participate, that is uh, grounded. Because right now, we are always talking about all-inclusive growth. But important is that how do we really make the excluded included? And that should be something that where the educational institutions should be very creative. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, before I continue, please, please know that this somebody offstage 
is taking note of all of these recommendations. And the fact that I'm not writing anything down is not indicative of the absence of note taking. So someone is taking note of uh, all of these. Uh, before, sister, before I get you, somebody else raise their hand first. The lady in orange, please, and then I'll go to uh, sister. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am from um, Marawi city of Mindanao. Now, I am with the other uh, presidents who have suggested that uh, the private school should be uh, included in the declaration in the first uh, sentence, like uh, Philippine higher education, uh, uh, which is composed of private and public schools, is an integral component in the shipping, like that, so that the private school should be uh, also included in the first sentence. At, uh, in our feeling and in our fight for uh, quality education, we feel that we are in equal footing with the public schools. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, yes, Sister. Uh, good afternoon. I would like to ask the framers of the declaration where in the entire declaration is community involvement or extension service of a higher education institution is taken up. I mean, research is clear, instruction is clear, but community involvement and extension service don't seem or doesn't seem to be all that clear in the declaration. Uh, I, I, speaking from at least from how I understood the process, sister, when they looked at the key issues, when the group looked at the key issues, it, it, by not mentioning it, it does not mean that it is downplaying it. But it did not seem to be a concern or a, a difficult issue when, when they were trying to come together. Okay, can I just come back? Sure. It is a key issue. As a matter of fact, accreditation takes into consideration very strongly one of three things instruction, research, and community involvement. So yes. I think it should appear in the declaration. Thank you, sister. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon. I am Mr. Morante from uh, Pass College in Alaminox, Mangasinan. Now, what caught my eye at this declaration is Ito, yung leveling the playing field. Uh, I cannot recall how many times I have heard this phrase, but it is not actually observed. In fact, especially between uh, public state universities and the private institutions. Uh, in fact, even a uh, CHED commissioner, Likwanan, declared in the Inquirer that he will try to she again will. level the playing field. Pero we had, I would just like to share our experience in Pangasinan, wherein our state universities there are uh, encroaching on the private institutions. When I say encroaching, ang scenario kasi doon sa Pangasinan, ang mga state universities, they are as far as sometimes 30 minutes or one hour away, offering the same courses. In fact, there was this one incident where we even filed a case against the state university na ang nangyari eh, they operated without any approval by their board of regents. They accepted enrollees. We brought the issue up to CHED and we received a letter. Ang response ng CHED, was that according to attorney, attorney Vitriolo, wala daw hong magagawa yung CHED. How is this true? I would just like to clarify, ano rin ang plano when we said here, leveling the playing field? How do we plan to address itong issue na it seems the CHED is helpless in trying to uh, level the playing field between public and private? In fact, there has been already three questions here related to that. 
meaning it is a prevailing problem nga. And in this declaration, wala pa rin clear eh. Yun, yun lang yung gusto kong malinawan sana. Very Father, si Sister Mona. Thank you. Thank you on that. Uh, uh, thank you. I'll, I'll try to explain a lot of these things after I get all the comments. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Sister Maria Herulinda Sittingson of La Consolacion College de Paro, Novaliches. Number two, regarding building academic industry linkages, I'm very glad that it says here to recognize the role of the government in promoting academic industry collaboration, part of which includes a review of the labor code with a view towards enabling internship and on-the-job training. Dolly is clear that they receive only or accept those 18 years of age to have internship training or uh, training, yeah, for training. And usually students who reach or reach the level of K-12 is only 17 years old. Who is going to make a waiver, the institution, the deep end, or the dolly? Thank you. Thank you, sister. I think that's why uh, the statement actually said will will uh, include a review on these on these laws. So thank you. Uh, yes, father, and then the lady in red uh, afterwards. First of all, um, just like to endorse what uh, sister said that uh, community involvement should be given at least a mention here because otherwise. Uh, it is completely ignored. Uh, in fact, it is not even assigned the appropriate uh, weight in the ranking promotion and accreditation of schools. Uh, next, I'd like to ask why you singled out, uh, well, the three agencies plus DOST, uh, whereas NEDA does not appear anywhere as being instrumental, for example, in the determination of uh, the landscape uh, and the uh, the mapping of uh, uh, in the mapping of industries and uh, regional needs and educational resources. So I think NEDA should come into the picture in order to determine the distribution in the same way that you're trying to consolidate uh, SOOCs, for example. So where does in, where is industry and where should be the appropriate uh, higher educational institutions? So the there is no correlation. Okay. Okay, and then uh, somewhere, because I make an important point of this in my other interventions, under governing Philippine, higher, uh, Philippine education, should there not be some kind of mention that the Philippine education system should be immunized from political interventions? Uh, as, a, as an explicit, thank you, as an explicit signal to the Senate, congressmen, uh, local officials from putting up schools on a whim rather than according to approved standards. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Yes, Madam. Josie Kakdak from Trace College. Po. Um, this morning, we were able to see how, ed how um, online learning systems and online education can uh, really uh, help in improving the quality of uh, our, of the, the delivery of our programs, of co our courses. But I do not see any item here that mentions the support, in support of that, uh, of, the, of the blended learning uh, approach. Okay, so maybe in number one, I'm just thinking that on the third item, uh, in, we can add uh, after to utilize private-public partnership dialogues for the sharing of best practices, would, we would add resources. And these um, may refer to the ICT resources. Okay. 
But then, uh, there is still the question that even if we are interested in improving the approach by um, using the blended, the, the face to face and uh, online uh, delivery of uh, lessons, we still have a problem with uh, connectivity. Okay? Philippines is among the highest when it comes to the cost of the use of the uh, internet, for example, but the lowest, but the slowest, among the slowest in bandwidth. So I'm just thinking, even if we have this, uh, uh, if, even, if, even we, if we are planning to improve our systems, if the internet connection is low and the cost is high, this could still prevent the uh, facility of this change. So maybe you can add a provision that would uh, like uh, drive the government or uh, include mm -hmm. the improvement of the ICT infrastructure. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And, uh, yeah, and, and I also support the point made by the sister earlier regarding community uh, linkages because this is needed for us who are applying for accreditation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll just take two more points. The gentleman in the back and then uh, former Secretary De Jesus and then we will uh, wrap it up. Yes, sir. Thank you. I am uh, Attorney Nicolas from Northwestern University. I join the sentiment of the private education institutions uh, and I hope my own comment will not be redundant. I am from the same region as the gentleman from Pangasinan. And the observation there uh, regarding uh, the supposed leveling of the playing field is that um, we were given statistics in the recent conference held by CHED in Region 1 that before the, uh, the division between or the sharing of the students between public and private higher education is that 20% would go to state universities and colleges and 80% would go to private uh, private education institutions. Now, at this, uh, in the latest statistics, now that sharing is now half. 50% are now going to the state universities and colleges, and 50% uh, where we have been experiencing uh, shortfalls in enrollment, now we only have half of that population. Uh, in the first enumeration, it says here that the programs and pol policies of HEIs should be in accordance with to their declared vision and mission. Shall we now expect state universities and colleges to reserve the offering of their programs only to their stated charters? And shall we then expect CHED to enforce uh, or uh, entertain petitions from private educational institutions for state universities and colleges to stop offering programs that are not within uh, their uh, mandate? So that is my sentiment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can, I end, can, I end with you? Can, I, can I end with you? There's one more. No, I'll end with you. Okay, we'll have Dr. Francisco, I think. Uh, and then we'll end with uh, Secretary De Jesus. So no more. No more standing. No more. No more. Based on the <laughs> questions and reactions of uh, some educators uh, this afternoon, it is very clear that the newly created Officers have a lot, of, a lot of things to do because the sentiment about the small schools and the big schools is something that must be really studied because we have almost 2,000 institutions in this country and majority are small schools. How to reach these schools by the big ones would be something that must be worked out under the concept of big brother helping a small brother. You cannot have collaboration unless there is understanding, cooperation, and coordination. With this big number of schools, I hope you can uh, cascade this association or this organization to meet the individual needs in the different regions of big and small schools. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Francisco. And last but not the least, former Secretary uh, De Jesus. The, here, sir. 
Th thank you very much. Uh, three quick points first. No? Uh, first, I, I, I'd like to thank Philippine Business for Education for opening up the forum to this, to this period of uh, comments and, and questions on the draft declaration. Uh, I think there were very good ideas that came up. It was very instructive for me to learn about the other concerns of the university presidents here. Second, uh, I also know that a lot of work went into the drafting of, of this declaration. And third, many of the comments did not fault the declaration itself, but noted perhaps omissions that at some point should be remedied. You know? So perhaps what we can do is accept this as a first step recalling the, the comment of, or the, the advice of our speaker this morning that this is only the first step in a long journey and that there is still, as the previous speaker said, much work that remains to be done. I think probably one of the steps that will need to be taken is for the presidents of the various associations to convene their members so that there is a fuller discussion of all of these items. Uh, so that, that may be the opportunity to clarify some of the points. We also need to understand what the purpose of this document is. It is a declaration of principles. So by its very nature, it cannot really address specific points of implementation. That has to be left to another venue. So what I would suggest, therefore, is that we proceed with the signing subject to those yes. uh, future steps that can be planned for by the officers and their respective, the respective members of the different uh, educational associations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary De Jesus. Yes. Before, before we wrap this up, I guess I would just like to echo those last sentiments. Uh, this issue of private, public has precisely been one of the reasons why we've come together. And if you look at the stage in front of you, this is the first time, ladies and gentlemen, that we have state, local, and private universities working together to level the playing field. Uh, all on one stage. So if you shoot them, there are many new positions opened in their universities. <laughs> So it is a first step, and we do recognize the detail mentioned, how, to, how do we level off, how do we deal with community extension, how do we deal with these other issues of innovation, and I perfectly agree that we should all work together to bang on Globe and Smart's head to lower the cost and improve service. Whether we have a unified basketball tournament, these are all issues that we want to discuss as we move forward. But I think, I think you have to congratulate yourselves and each other for coming here and being open to dialogue. Uh, I will, the, the signing of this declaration, because the associations have worked on this declaration, their representatives will sign the, the declaration. Asking you to sign is a completely voluntary effort. If you choose not to sign, you, can, you will not have to pay for your lunch anymore. Meaning, don't feel any pressure to sign, but we would appreciate there are art tables on the way out and there's a big board that you wish to sign, if you do wish to sign, mainly as an expression that this is a way forward, rather than it is an absolute, absolute uh, uh, document. So it really is, a, uh, to a large extent. Also, there will be sign-up sheets for working committees on these issues, so that you can, and we can involve you and invite you to more specific discussions around topics you might be interested in. So if you're interested in community extension, or interested in being, adding this part, there are working groups that you can sign and leave us your name, number, etc., so that we can uh, call you to invite you to further discussion on this. So without much further, can I invite the presidents to uh, sign the declaration first? Okay, so can I ask them all to stand up and just sign the uh, declaration?
Okay, thank you, thank you. We will frame that and sell that. I'm sorry. Uh, can I now invite uh, Dr. Professor Tommy Lopez to say, no, stay there first as uh, Tommy says a few words. Chito asked me to deliver the, the closing remarks uh, to this conference. And uh, as I, I, I had a prepared talk, but I think, uh, I will, as I was trying to reflect on the discussions that preceded the signing, I imagine this, it's a scene out of Biak Bato, the Declaration of the Philippine uh, Independence. I suspect the discussions then and the issues raised now are very similar. Because the revolu a revolution, a true revolution, is really the the confluence of many different interests coming together for a common purpose. I think that's the importance of what we're doing. And if you don't feel it yet, we are at the threshold of a revolution. We are. We are. Uh, we need to revolutionize Philippine education. And we don't have to talk about the reasons. In, in, in 2012, uh, I was, I was very pleasantly surprised and at the same time bothered by a projection of the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, projecting that by the year 2050, the Philippine economy will grow uh, to be the 15th largest economy, moving up 27 rungs from its current position. And if you read that, if you read that article, embedded deep in that article were a few phrases that describe that this projection is anchored on a growing Philippine population with which, if properly educated and trained, will propel the productivity gains that the Philippine economy is projected to achieve. If properly trained and educated. So that growth, the human resource requirements of our country are staring us in the face as we look forward to 2050. And we even take a look at today, uh, we talked about the ambassador and uh, our, the head of USAID, talked about the sterling economic growth of the country that is characterized by the lack of inclusion <laughs> and the uh, lack of unemployment and livelihood generation at the bottom. And again, and again, if you look at the root causes of that and the solutions to the lack of inclusion, education again plays and requires a dramatic change. The other thing that I'm sure we're grappling with as we look around, we could, we look around what's happening in our society is the realization that we, there is no singular value thread that ties all of us. Uh, we, we don't have a sense of countryhood and nationalism that binds all of us. Uh, we talk about soft skills and education, and I, those of you who are developing the curriculum for our schools, you realize that value education is one of the deepest black holes where we're failing miserably, and that is why Today, we have the, uh, the lack of the rule of law and all of the social ills that are bothering us. And so, without any doubt, I think you and I are gathered here today. You all came from wherever you came from, knowing full well, deep in your hearts, that there's got to be change in Philippine education. Otherwise, you and I will not be here if we don't share that realization. We're also here because I'm sure you and I sense that our windows, that there are windows opening up that will make this revolution move faster, move more effectively than ever before. Because the fascinating thing about revolutions happening is that they're never planned. 
Revolutions happen because several things come together in confluence and key domino tiles emerge that get tipped, that get tipped over and the other domino tiles fall. And I think if you take a look at the horizon of our sector, there are several things that are hastening, if you will, or opening up these windows for revolution. The first one is the single biggest educational reform that our country is undertaking in the last 100 years. And that's the K-12 to that's the K-12 reform. That's going to happen, whether we like it or not. And you and I are already talking about the tremendous disruptive impact of that reform. The other thing that is in the horizon coming next year is Asianization. The idea of mobility of, of service workers, the idea of alignment of curriculum degrees, that's going to happen again. These are forcing us to take a look at what we do and giving us the impetus to do things differently. And so, dear friends, I think we're gathered here today because we realize that there's going to be very serious disruptive change. And these changes are going to rock the very things that either give us comfort today or distress us. Uh, it's so fascinating. Everybody talk, everybody's angry with Ched, right? Everybody's angry with Ched. Everybody says, we want to be autonomous with Ched. But, and I, I walk around many campuses, I ask, are you preparing for K-12? to I said, no, we're not. Why not? Because Ched hasn't given us any guidelines. I think the fact that Ted is not giving us any guidelines is good. Because we can do things ourselves. And so we, we, like the, we like the idea of autonomy. We like the idea of freedom. But we cannot grapple with the responsibility and accountability of freedom. And so I think all of these changes that are going to hap are happening will impact on four things that we hold dear in our lives. And unless we are, we are brave enough and we are passionate enough and we are willing to accept that there's got to be a revolution, then the changes will be incremental. And incremental change is not what we need. We need not evolution, but revolution. We need transformation. And what are these areas where transformation can occur? The first, whether we like it or not, typologies will change. Already they are. You know, we talk about uh, uh, private, uh, higher education, uh, private government. In, in government, there is, there is state, there is LUC. In private, there is sectarian, non-sectarian. Uh, hey, those rules are going to change. Those rules are going to change. You have high schools, you have colleges doing senior high schools. So are they a college or are they a high school? That will happen in 2016. So typologies will change. Curriculum will change. The K-12 will change curriculum. Hey, business models will change, right? Private schools are complaining. That, hey, level, level playing field. You know what the biggest opportunity for level playing field will be? It's the voucher system. I don't know if we have sat down and thought about the full implication of the voucher system. In 2016, all grade 10 graduates, all senior high school, all junior high school, public school graduates, will each have between 15 and 18,000 pesos in their pockets. And they can choose. They can choose which high school to go to. Can you imagine that? In the past, kids, families who are poor cannot choose where to go to high school. But if with a voucher system as currently designed, Every grade 10 graduate can choose. Now tell me, isn't that a great playing field 
leveler. And we have to ensure that that program, when it comes in, we, we help shepherd it to provide the breakthrough that it will have. So there's going to be change in typology. There's going to change in curriculum. There's going to be change in business model. And these things won't happen unless there's change in the regulatory environment. The problem with our regulatory environment today is that there is that they're anchored on compliance. Education is not about compliance. Education is about transformation. Huh? Compliance and accreditation are prisons. So the regulatory environment must allow us to transform. Now, why am I saying this? Because I don't know if you realize the impact of what you, most especially you, and us have achieved today. For the first time, all the major HEI, I think, I think as of last count, 400 or nearly 500 institutions and about 650 individuals have gathered in one place and have agreed to talk. Have agreed to talk and listen to each other. And I think this is a great achievement. This is Byak na Bato. Now, because the revolution is at a threshold, you and I have the choice. We can do what we used to do, go our own little ways, fight our little petty siloed battles, and let the revolution define us. Or we can come together as one, having the same vision, and then we define the revolution. Now, which one will it be? We allow the revolution to define us, or we come together and define the revolution? Thank you very much, and good afternoon to everybody. Ikalawang Richard Gerver, ikaw ba yan? Enough said. No, let, me, let me just uh, wrap things up. Uh, I don't have a lot to say anymore. First of all, for those of you who have questions about the uh, transition fund or the voucher system, there's a gentleman in front. Uh, I guess in case you don't know him, then you're not part of our education. Dr. Vince Fabella is uh, going to can answer any questions for, I think, a very minimal fee. Of, uh, no, uh, he can answer any questions about the transition fund uh, for free. Uh, and on your way out, please, uh, on your way out, there's an opportunity to sign the manifesto, both on the paper and also there's a big wall outside that you, if, if you wish to sign. There's also merienda that you can take home. If you don't sign, there's no more. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's merienda you can take on your way out. And also there are working committees if you wish to participate. Uh, in any of the discussions in this. Again, I think a round of applause for each other for coming here. A round of applause for the people in front. We'd like again, once again, to thank USAID, uh, British Council, Copilandia, Ayala Corporation, Diwa, Globe Telecom, Business Mirror, Malaya Business Insight, uh, and Business World. So thank you and welcome to the revolution. <laughs>